Hey y'all, this is David, the Georgia Photographer, and today we've got a film project, some dust, and just what's happening around the house. First things first, they drilled the hole for the power pole. That was loud, and it was really, really, really dusty. There's what I need. All right. What I've got here is a spool that fits 620 film. You can only buy 120 film now. So to be able to shoot this film in a Browning, a Brownie Target 620 camera, I have to go in the bathroom, basically pin up a quilt over the door to kill all the light leaks, wind the film off of this spool on to this spool. Basically, I spool it off, take it loose from the reel. It's got a little piece of masking tape holds it on the reel. Tape it to this reel, wind it back up. Then I can load the camera. To get the camera out, first thing you gotta do is take the, white, the film advance and pull up and turn a little bit and it, and it raises up just a little bit. Then this, this button is the latch that holds the camera in the body. So you pull up on that latch and then the camera will slide out of the housing. All right, there's always a spool in the camera. Never ever take your spool, your dead spool out. Okay, it tells you load with 620 film. And if you try to put 120 film in this camera, sometimes you can get the reel in, but it never works. It binds and it breaks down. It's, it's, it's a failure. So always use a 620 spool. I normally try to load the film in the dark room as well. That way I don't risk light leaks. You, you can load it outside in like dim light like I, I could open the door and see what I was doing but I normally do it in the dark that way my first exposure doesn't have any light pollution it leaks around the edges or anything but I, this is what I'm going to use for my film photography challenge for the February film February challenge I'm going to shoot my roll of film on the target 620 so let's go in the bathroom and let's re-spool this film <clears throat> and just like that the film's in the camera I couldn't really show you re-spooling the film because I have to do it in pitch black and I found another light leak that I didn't realize in my bathroom. Hopefully this ain't spoiled. It probably ain't because it was still really dark, but I could see a glint of light along the wall where there was a spill coming from somewhere in the next room. I didn't think about this, but I normally re my film at night and that gets rid of 90% of your light leaks just doing it when the sun's not out. To load the film in the camera is pretty simple. You have a take-up spool, and if you'll notice, the core of this spool is a lot thicker. The spool ends are a little bigger too. Supposedly, the width is slightly wider on 120 film as well, but it's there. It's the the variations are very slight. But um, I don't take the chance because I've heard horror stories about film getting stuck in the mechanism and it being a nightmare to get it out of your camera. So I always re-spool it. But I did also forget. When you take the, when you unwind this roll of film, the film is taped to a piece of dark paper so that you don't get light leaks through the paper. Well, it's only taped on one end. <laughs> the leading end is the only end that it's taped on. It's not taped on both ends. So when I got down to the point where I got to the other end, the film just rolled up. <laughs> so <laughs> I had to figure that crap out. Wind it down to it. Then I got some of the paper on and then lay that in the floor and hold it with my feet and then Straighten the film out against the paper and get it good and tight and pinch it and then turn that over and then get the spool and hand, one hand wind it down. <laughs> it was a big deal. It's not easy to root spool a foam pan. Not as easy as I was thinking it was going to be. So I got it on the 620 spool and I got the spool in the camera and I have not advanced the frame yet. On this camera, okay, you have a, this is a portrait viewfinder. This is a landscape viewfinder. These are 
these are composing lenses. They look through these little windows here. They just literally prism across and prism across. It's that simple. The taking lens projects back onto the film plane in the back and it takes, I think, a six by nine. It's supposed to be a, a contact exposure classified, but it's doing a medium format exposure. So you can, you can blow it up. I mean, you have a, I think they call that a Messier lens and it's got a, a standard rolling shutter design. It's kind of a neat how the shutter works. And uh, you have bulb mode in basically 1 30th of a second. And then you have two apertures. You have F11 and F16. That's all you get to work with. So the light meter settings are pretty simple. You have the F11 and the F16 and the 1 30th of a second shutter speed. And you just check it. And then you're looking for, this one has a gauge number of 12 on the gauge. If I'm around 12 to 13, the exposure will be good. It's that simple. I've got it set for ISO 100 film, which is what I put in it. And off you go to the races. To advance the frame, it's got a little dark window on the back so you can see your frame number. So you just turn this crank until you start seeing the number come by. And there's the starter tab. You keep turning until you see the number one up here. Seems like it takes literally forever. There it is, number one. Oh, no, that's the arrow. Yeah, that's the arrow. Is that the one? <laughs> Not sure I'm on number one yet. I don't think so. No. We're getting there, though. I think I hear the film crossing the plane. There's some dots. Some more dots, some more dots, some more dots, and the number one I'm on the first frame. Now I'm ready to take pictures. So I've got it loaded. This camera is surprisingly clean. It doesn't have any light leaks. So surprisingly so. So I'm going to get this out and go shoot this roll of film. Now the rules for this contest are you shoot your roll of film and you don't develop it. So you actually box it up, send it to the developer. They've lined up. They've got a processing company that's going to process all the film. And I don't remember what the fee is. It ain't much. But you send it in. They process it. And then the judging happens on based on the whole roll of film. So you don't get to, like, cherry pick your best frames. You know, do you? I'm going to try and tell a small story with mine. I only have, I think, seven or eight frames on this roll. So... I'm going to try and tell some kind of narrative with my story. And it's all black and white, so I, done, I'm, I ain't going to shoot color in this camera. It just kind of seems weird. But yeah, that's my goal, is to tell some kind of photographic story. So we'll get this out and see how it goes. But we won't know till March. <laughs> I've got the exposure figured out, so it should work. But yeah, that's what the plan is. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. And Show you what I was going to do for film February. There it is. Well, technically, there it is. I have to use the light meter so I can see if I've got enough light. Basically, bright sun is pretty much, if I run sunny 16, it'll work. And thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Y'all take care, all right? Bye-bye.